Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm continuing the series Growing in Christ. Last week we learned about believing in Christ as our foundation. That coming to church is irrelevant if we do not believe in Christ. So the basics and the tenets of our, foundation, our Christian faith is first of all giving our lives to Christ. So if you are here and you haven't given your life to Christ, I will encourage you, you can have a conversation with me after service and I will be happy to lead you to Christ. That is the beginning of our Christian journey. That is where we start. And I believe that whilst we are here, all of us have made that call, we have made that decision, and we have gone to say that, God, we want you in our life. Be my personal savior. Hallelujah. So last week we talked about believing in Christ, and this week we, we are going on to, to the new nature. Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells me in the Second Corinthians 5, my emphasis will be on 17, but I would like you to read from verse 1. The Bible says that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The Bible says that the old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. As we study and as we learn, as we hear your word about growing in Christ and what it takes to grow in Christ. Father, I pray that, Lord, you will bring illumination to your word. That you use me as an instrument to Lord. That even as I minister, I minister to myself as well. That I will grow in you from grace to grace and from strength to strength. I pray that everyone that will hear the word today will go back reflecting on their Christian life and endeavor and do whatever it takes to grow in Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that if a man is in Christ, he is a new creation. So once you have given your life to Christ, it doesn't end there. He says that you are a new creation. The New Living Translation says, either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have, we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ, who died and who, who, raised, who was raised from dead. Hallelujah. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So once you give your life to Christ, the Bible says you become a new person. Hallelujah. And I know that when you become a new person, old habits don't just go. You don't wake up and all of a sudden, everything is spanking new. Hallelujah. That would have been a magic. We haven't got that much. But we have to have the mindset that God died for us. And the Bible says that because he died for everyone, so those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. But they will live for Christ. My question this morning to all of us is, are we living for Christ? If somebody looks at our lives, would they say that they see Christ in us? Hallelujah. Because he says that if any man is in Christ, the Bible says he's a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. So will somebody attest that indeed, if you used to steal before you came to Christ, are you still stealing? If you used to fornicate before you came to Christ, are you still in fornication? If you used to have all sorts of things that are not glorifying God, and you did everything, you said things with your mouth, remembering that your body is the temple of God, are you still doing the same? The Bible says that if any man is in Christ, behold, the old is gone. So we need to have that conscious effort. We need to make that conscious effort to say, God, I want to renew my mind in you. I want to be like you. I want to be an ambassador for Christ. There has to be a difference between my life and the Gentile next door. Hallelujah. That our life will make a mark of difference. That you cannot be in Christ and remain the same. Hallelujah. If you, 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 you are wearing a new cloth, you don't put it the new cloth on top of the old one. You normally take the old one off, the one that is dirty, and you put the new one. So in, in the same way, spiritually, we need to make that conscious effort to take off the old clothing that we used to have. 
the behaviors that do not glorify God, the things that does not help emulate Christ in you and put on Christ. Hallelujah. So Galatians 2.20 says, Paul says that I have been crucified with Christ. And he says, I no longer live. He says that the life I live, I live by faith through Christ who loved me and died and gave his life for me. Hallelujah. Is that your testimony this morning? And as children of God, I know it takes time. But if we would determine and we would purpose in our hearts to live according to the word of God, the life we live will become ambassadors for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Our light will so forth shine that wherever you go, you will draw men unto, unto him. Hallelujah. People will see your, the difference in your life. Hallelujah. They will say that yes, of a truth, this person has given their lives to Christ. So he says that, so we are Christ ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. When I looked at that, if I'm an ambassador of Christ, then it means that I am God's rep on, on earth. I am his representative on earth. And he says that God is making his appeal to reconcile man to him through us. So whatever we do, is it bringing people to Christ? Or is it drawing them away? Whatever habits that we might find ourselves in, is it really drawing us to Christ? Or is it moving us away from Christ? Is it making the Spirit of God so far away from us? The Bible says that if any man it be in Christ, he is a new creation. The Bible says the old has gone, the new has come. And we need to make that conscious effort to work at our salvation with fear and with trembling. With fear and with trembling, knowing that it's slippery, we can lose it. That there's a thin line between sin and righteousness. Hallelujah. And we would daily go before God and say, God, we want to walk with you. The Bible tells us newborn babies. He says, desire the sincere milk of the word of God. If you would desire the word of God and you allow it to prune your life, you will become fruitful in the spirit. The words that will come out of our mouths will edify. The words that will come out of our mind will edify. Hallelujah. We will not cause pain. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. If you look at the book of Galatians 3, 26, 27, the Bible says, 26 and 27. The Bible tells me, and all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. Hallelujah. There is no longer Jew nor Gentile, slave or free, male or female, for you all are one in Christ. Hallelujah. It says our faith in Christ has given us that opportunity to put on Christ. And putting on Christ means that we need to establish that our character depicts Christ. That our characters, whatever we do, wherever we find ourselves, it speaks volumes of the love of Christ. That there will not be confusion between you and the unbeliever. So we will not find the unbeliever doing something and we find you doing the same thing. There has to be a distinction. Hallelujah. Because we are children of God. For a reason. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that God is making his appeal through us. But how can God make his appeal through us? If our own life is not even worth talking about. If we are living in sin. And we are doing all sorts of things. That does not give him pride. Hallelujah. There's a song that says. I want to make you proud. I want to put a smile on your face. I don't know who sang it. But each time. I, I hear that song. Jonathan Nelson. Yes, Jonathan Nelson. I just think about it. If you wake up every day saying, God, I want to make you proud. I want to put a smile on your face. Then it means that my behavior, step by step, you, I, I will ask you to order it. That every word that comes from my mouth, I will ask you to season my words with salt. That my words will not harm. That my words will not cause pain. That my words will not cause somebody to have psychological trauma. Hallelujah. Because sometimes 
It is the word we speak that causes a lot of pain. And somebody can have trauma just by words. Christ is making his appeal through you and me. When someone sees you, do they see Christ in you? Or do they see the old self? Reflect on this for a moment. This is an individual walk. It's an individual journey. What does it mean for you to live as a new creature in Christ? Ephesians chapter 4, 17 to 32. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying that they are hopelessly confused. They have hardened their minds and their hearts. So is it true that somebody can harden their mind and their heart and decide that they will choose not to do what God wants them to do? But that is what the scripture is saying. He's saying that live no longer as the Gentiles do, as the unbelievers do, for they are hopelessly confused. Yesterday we were out preaching the word and telling people that Christ came to die for their sins. And one of them was saying, oh, that is a lie. I don't believe it. Hallelujah. They are ignorant. But we pray and we say, God loves you anyway. He came and he died on the cross for you. And we pray that God give them illumination. That even as they go back to their homes to sleep, may you speak to their heart. Because all we need to do is to speak out and say, God, touch their lives. Because it is only God who can convict a person, not the evangelism we do. Hallelujah. So even the other people who said, oh, when we said, God bless you, they said, oh, what have we done for God to bless us? And we said, God bless you because he loves you. He gave his life for you on the cross of Calvary. And they said, oh, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. We said, it's okay. Jesus Christ still loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible says that we should not longer live as the Gentiles do, who are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and harden their hearts against him. You might be here and you know that what you are doing is wrong, but you have closed your mind and you have hardened your heart and you have decided in your heart that I will do it anyway, even though you know the word of God is against it. I pray that this morning the Lord himself will convict you to desist from anything that does not bring glory to his name in the mighty name of Jesus. He says that they have no sense of shame they live for lustful pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. He says that since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former ways of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. And he says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitude. He says, put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are all part of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use your use foul or abusive language. Let everyone who says everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear it. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. When I got there, beloved, I was struck. He says that do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way we live. So it means that by the way we live, we can make the Holy Spirit sad because God has bought us with his precious blood. He says, your body is my temple. And he says, honor me with your body. Honor me with your, your intellect. Honor me with everything that is within you. But you choose to do otherwise. And I pray that this morning that the Lord himself will ask us 
and will help us to renew our minds, that we will make a conscious effort. It has to be a deliberate effort. Because if you don't work at it, it won't happen. It's not automatic. It's like you want to save a thousand pounds. Will it just appear in your savings account? No. What do you have to do? You might have to set up a direct debit and say that every month I'm going to put a hundred pounds as a standing order into this account. And every month it goes, whether you like it or not. You are making a conscious effort to make sure that you hit that target of a thousand pounds a month. Hallelujah. So in the same way, by renewing our mind, we need to talk to God before we set off out from the house and say, God, I want my life to be pleasing unto you. I want my, uh, my life to be a light unto the darkness. So I don't want to be doing the same thing that the unbelievers are doing. The fact that they are doing it doesn't mean that I qualify to do the same. That I want to be set apart for Christ. And if you will look in the Bible, anybody that God used, the Lord separated them. And the Lord told them to set themselves apart for his use. And if God will use you and you will minister to many people and be useful in this generation, you will need to set yourself apart. The Bible says that they hardened their minds and their hearts. Have you hardened your heart? Have you discerned and have you decided that regardless of what you hear or what the Bible has told you, that you will still not bother anyway? The Bible says that, behold, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. He says our words should be an encouragement to those who hear it. And do not bring sorrow to the Holy Spirit by the lives that we live. He says, remember, he has identified you as his own. Guaranteeing that you will save, you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of rage. Get rid of anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all type of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as Christ, God through Christ, has forgiven us. Amen. Many a times, God forgives us so much for the many things we do against his will, against everything that he tells us not to do. But we find it so difficult to show mercy onto another person. But if we have to walk in our new nature, then the Bible says we should be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven us. If you remember the mercies of God, if you remember where he picked you from, that you were nothing, yeah. and he bought you, and he purchased you with the blood of Jesus. Amen. What can somebody do so much that you cannot forgive? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, God is saying that Hallelujah. we should be kind one towards another. And he's encouraging us to grow in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a scripture in Colossians 3, 1 to 17. I will encourage you to just make a note of it. I'll try and read it briefly. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 7. It talks, um, I'll read it quickly. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. And he says, put to death the sinful earthly things <coughs> lacking within you. Hallelujah. He says, put to death. Tell your neighbor, put to death. Hallelujah. It means kill it. Hallelujah. He says kill it. If there is any habit that you are, you are involving, the Paul says that sometimes the things I want to do, I cannot do it. But there is grace. And if you choose to live right, God will give you the enabling power. Hallelujah. God will give you enabling power. Hallelujah. He says, so put to death the sinful earthly things lacking within you have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. 
worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now it is the time for you to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off the old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Hallelujah. So he says in verse 10, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Hallelujah. Beloved, I'm saying that it is not magic. Just as you want to save a thousand pounds and it starts with a direct debit. If you choose to live right and you engage God and the Holy Spirit in it, he will help you. Even if you find yourself walking towards sin, God will prompt you and he will remind you to say, no, you shouldn't do that. And sometimes you may say something. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you say something, maybe it's just me, and then straight away the Holy Spirit rebukes you. Yes. Have you experienced that before? Yes. I do. Sometimes I say something, and then straight away the Holy Spirit will just convict me and say, no, you shouldn't have said that. Yes. And then I just straight away I realize that God is speaking to me because the Bible says I am the salt of this world. So when I realize that, I hold on and I pray and I say, God, help me. Hallelujah. Because in the book of James, the Bible says that the tongue is the littlest body part. But the Bible says it's hard to control the tongue. So sometimes once it's come out, it's very difficult. Hallelujah. So I am practicing. When I'm angry, I don't talk. When I'm angry, I decide not to talk. And sometimes it's even more painful for the people around me. It's not because I'm angry at them. It's not because I, I, I want to hurt them more. Because I just think that the things that might come out of my spirit, because of the anger, might not be edifying, might not help them. I'm a mental health nurse. So I understand that sometimes psychologically, the things I say might have impact. So I choose not to say anything sometimes. Hallelujah. Because sometimes the things that run in my head, if I pull it out and I want to put it on paper, I say, God, this is not like your child. This should never come out of me. Hallelujah. And I say, God, refine me. Make me better. Make me a, a salt. Make me a somebody who will refine the world around me. Make sure that my words will edify. That I will be an encourager. That I will not be somebody who will cause pain and bitterness and rage and anger. And that when I go wrong, I'm quick enough to say, God, I am sorry. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I understand that God has been so merciful unto me. God has been so merciful unto me. And without him, I can do nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. We will continue this series. And I want us to just rise up on your feet. We will continue this Growing in Christ series. And I believe God wants us all to renew our minds. It's a conscious effort. We have to work at it. Day in, day out. Whatever it is. Whatever it takes. Don't condemn yourself. The Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation. I'm not here to condemn you or to make you so feel guilty that you can't come to church. No. I want you to know that God loves you. But he doesn't want us to live in our old nature. Yes. He wants us to be renewed. He wants us to exhibit the good life that he has died on the cross for us. Hallelujah. Begin to pray. Have a tete-a-tete -tete with your God. What are your struggles in life? What are your struggles? He says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone. If you are living in sin, ask for forgiveness and ask the Lord to help you. That you will set yourself apart for his use. That God will use you. Beloved, God will use you. But we need to set ourselves apart. Father, I thank you. I set myself apart for your use. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. That will be a good example unto you. That will be a good example unto you. That you will use me to nurture me. And to Father Lord, bring people unto Christ through the words, through my deeds, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Are you blessed? Have you received something from the Lord today? Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap of rain. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus.